Uh, hey everybody, it's a bad idea here to show you the uh, fruits of a very exciting Friday night getting the Nexus 7 to run real Ubuntu. Uh, I have about 8 years experience getting Linux to run on things that don't really quite support Linux, like this Korean beauty that I imported with Windows XP that uh, it doesn't hold a charge anymore, but trust me, there's an extremely fragile build of Ubuntu 9 somewhere on its 4 gigabyte hard drive. The Nexus 7, though, I got it because I felt like I should like Android as a Linux person. But you know what? I don't. I just can't like Android. It's, it's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. I failed you. I'm not going to baby you through the steps of how to get Ubuntu on here because it's straightforward if you've done this sort of thing before and if you haven't this probably isn't the time to start. It uh, boots pretty quickly and I have it configured to just not touch that for five seconds and it will pop up the desktop. Let's see, there we go. And uh, here's the thing, the Ubuntu image by default boots into Unity. This is bad. This is very, very bad. It uses practically all the RAM and it's extraordinarily slow and it takes like 15 seconds to close a window as it gets more and more transparent one degree at a time. So what I did was I went into Synaptics and I got LXDE, that's Lightweight X11 Desktop Environment and all the apps that start with LX that go with it. And then you log out of Unity, and it will dump you into GDM. And then you switch to uh, LXDE, and then from then on you have LXDM as your login manager, and I was able to configure that to auto-login. Anyway, once you do this, suddenly everything becomes so much better, it's so much faster. Uh, that was... See how responsive that is. I'm sorry, there's some glare here. System tools, task manager. See, that's was very snappy. Come on, focus. There we go. As you can see, uh, there's hundreds of megabytes of RAM left. Um, I can probably get this down some more because there's probably some of these are not strictly necessary. Oh, by the way, Bluetooth doesn't work right now, so you might as well turn that off to save power. Um, we can open real Firefox. I see that open very quickly. Restore session. Loaded the tabs reasonably fast. Uh, the on-screen keyboard is called Onboard. I don't have it set to uh, load by default because I also have a hardware keyboard, so Universal Access Onboard. And it's set to load a button, and you can move this button around on the screen. And when you tap it, it pops up. And I hated the default colors. I made it much better. So, to show off that it is performant for a real-world web app, this is Google Drive. Let's look at my secret stash of Vocaloid pictures. Don't judge me. And as you can see, that scrolls very fast. It's uh, just as good as any netbook I've ever used. However, the Firefox is not, like, touch-aware, so you have to use the little scroll bar on the side. By the way, one of the most important things you can do is to get into all the settings for, like, your taskbar and stuff and make them bigger. Make the window decorations bigger, because by default they are very, very small. Um, 
actually this would have been pretty much impossible to do if I didn't have hookups for hardware, keyboard, and mouse. Uh, this is called a host cable, I guess because it makes the tablet with the micro USB be a host instead of the uh, cl client. I got this on Amazon for a couple dollars. I think the brand is called OTG. And you can just plug in any standard USB keyboard and mouse with these. Um, and I particularly had to use the mouse for right click to get into some settings. But once I got everything all set up, especially with setting the login thing to auto login after five seconds, uh, I don't need the hardware keep hardware keyboard now for anything unless I accidentally suspend it because it wants the password when I come out of suspend and I haven't figured how to talk it out of that yet. Uh. There you go. And overall I find it to be very acceptably responsive. Uh, very office document viewer. Maximize, file, recent, and uh, since PDF viewer has panning, it it's, acts more touch aware. It's uh, not as smooth as some devices, but it works pretty well. Uh, as for rotate, uh, it does not auto rotate yet. Uh, you can use standard X11 rotate utilities, however, the touchscreen coordinate system did not rotate with it, and that was interesting to undo. So right now, I'm sure I could figure out eventually how to rotate the uh, touch coordinates, but right now it's stuck this way. Um... And that's Ubuntu on a Nexus 11 running very quickly and snappy and just as good as a nice netbook. And, uh, well, the Sun Spider results for Firefox on this came out, um, at 17.30. The iPad 3 I'm filming this with got a 17.21, and that cheapest laptop... At Best Buy sells, got like a 603. So, whoops. yeah, I'm good at this filming thing. Really good. By the way, the screen looks much better under Ubuntu than it does under Android because fonts render correctly. Android, what are you doing? Your fonts are terrible. Uh,. There we go. And uh, some of these widgets don't render correctly for whatever reason. Um, very minor breakage here and there. And the sound doesn't really work. If you suspend and resume, it might come back. You need a hardware keyboard to come back from suspend because it wants the password uh, and the, this doesn't pop up. Uh, however, often when I resume the touch driver wigs out and I can't click things anymore. This also happens randomly for no reason and I've just been rebooting because I can't think of anything else to do. Uh, thanks for watching.